Hey, how about the camera? Start the cam- okay, that's better. Here's how you do cinematic camera transition in Unity. You can use this method to make awesome cutscenes or just make your gameplay cooler. Do you know or remember Kyle? He is going to walk across our level and on the way we will have some fancy cuts and transitions. I'm going to walk you through the process step by step and by the end of this video you will be able to implement your own system to control all kinds of camera and their transitions. And if that's not enough, I'm also going to give you some extra tips so you can improve this solution even more. So make sure to stick until the end. Let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is install Unity's greatest package, Cinemachine. It's such a big time saver. What? You don't know Cinemachine? Cinemachine is an Emmy Award winning suite of tools for dynamic, smart, codeless camera. It's just a great camera system. Go to Window, Package Manager, switch to Unity Registry on the top left and search for Cinemachine. Download it, install it and you are good to go. Now you can right click and create any of the virtual camera systems that Cinemachines proposes. Our little playground has two large areas and a small covered pathway. I've built this with my 3D sci-fi kit that, by the way, you can download it for free. The link is in the description. Use it for whatever you want, it's free. And if you use it, I would really appreciate if you would tag me on Twitter or Instagram. That would be really awesome. I would love to see what you are building with this. Those of you who might have used Unity for quite some time, no Robot Kyle. Well, he's going to be our guest today. You can grab him on the Unity Asset Store. It comes with not much. There is a mesh, there it's rigged and uh, there is a texture. So yeah. I've downloaded an idle and walk animation from Mixamo and then I hook them up in the animator using a blend tree where I can control the animation using the speed parameter. Nothing too fancy. I won't spend time explaining this in detail because for the sake of this tutorial, you could just use a cube or a bean. Now to make the character move, I've baked the level and added a nav mesh agent to Kyle. I just changed the speed to two because it was just feeling better with that particular work animation I have. By the way, if you want to learn more about Navmesh and animators, then go check out my other video up there. It covers all that in a bit more detail. Kyle is here and he should go there. Let's create a new script called go to destination. This script is simple. We grab the Navmesh and the animator in the awake method. Then we set the destination of the Navmesh to where we want to go. Here we have a public transform destination, so we pass the position. Then in the update method, we just compute the speed to pass it to the animator so that the animator well animates. Navmesh agent.velocity.magnitude divided by the navmesh agent speeds will give us the value between 0 and 1, so this will make the animation blend nicely. Now drag and drop the script on the character and we can give an empty game object as the destination. Here, Kyle will go to Kyle's Destiny, which is located on the other side of the level next to this bean that you can get in the 3D sci-fi kit, by the way. Run the game and just make sure that Kyle goes where he's supposed to. That looks great, so let's move on. We want to add cameras after. In the hierarchy, right click and go down to Cinemachine. Let's choose a virtual camera. How Cinemachine works is by taking over the main camera. So you still have the main camera, but now it has a Cinemachine brain. And instead of trying to move the camera, we will move the virtual camera. The first camera will follow Kyle, so we can drag and drop Kyle into the follow slot. Then we can move and rotate the virtual camera to just be behind the character. I'll set the values of the body to 0.4, 1.7 and minus 1. I also changed the focal length to 16 to have kind of a wide angle. But you do as you please, your game is maybe a bit different. Now things are a little bit out of focus. That's because I have set up a global volume with a post-processing profile on it. I do several color grading changes to make the game look pretty, but the biggest change is the depth of field. If for example I change the focal length or the focus distance, well it changes how much it gets blurred. Now we could find a good balance for this camera. But what about other cameras? If the distance between the subject and the camera changes, we have to adapt the focus distance each time. And this is where Cinemachine, yet again, can help us out. We can add an extension to do just that. On the virtual camera, go to Extensions and add the Cinemachine volume settings. We can choose the post-processing profile 
And for this camera, we say to track the follow target. That's all there is. Let's play and that looks quite nice. Next up, let's add more cameras. What I will do is simply duplicating the virtual camera and placing it somewhere else. Now this second camera will not follow the character, but it will just look at it. And if we do that, we should also change the focus tracking of the volume settings. So we change it from follow target to look at target. That way the sub the subject will be in focus, right? Okay, okay, I'll place the camera a bit further down the path. As I move the camera, it always looks at the character. It's awesome. Let's move it a bit down, maybe increase a bit the focal length, and that will do it. I'll make another duplicate, and this time it will look at the cool dummy bean that I have. It looks at the pivot point, so we can go into the aim section and tune the offset. All right, that's fine. We have three cameras in the game view, but right now we only see what camera three sees. When you use Cinemachine, there are two standard ways to switch camera. You can change the priority, or you can disable and enable the cameras you want or don't want. If you play with a priority, the camera with the highest priority will be live on screen. All cameras have a priority of 10 by default. If you increase the first camera to 11, then it will directly switch to that one. Put back to 10 and it stays, because that was the last active camera, so to say. Reduce the priority and the next one with the highest priority will be selected. Very easy. Much much easier than the priority system on NavMesh engines. Speaking of priorities, please like and subscribe this video, that would help me a lot, and that way you will also not miss any other video that is coming. That was one way of switching. The other option is to disable cameras you don't want and enable them that you do want. Here's how it works with multiple cameras. And we assume they all have the same priority. When a camera is live and it gets disabled, Cinemachine switches to the next one. When you enable a camera, Cinemachine switches to it directly as well, even if other cameras are active. Let me show you. All cameras are running and it happens that the first camera is live. If I disable camera three, nothing happens. But if I enable it, then we switch to it. If I disable it again, then this time we go to the next camera. That's all there is really. The last camera alive or the last enabled camera is a chosen one. You can of course mix both techniques. You can play with priorities and activate and deactivate cameras as you go. I like Cinemachine, it's a good system. Now that we understand how it works, let's automate the transition with code. We could also use a timeline by the ideas that we control everything with code so that we could make better gameplay. So here's what we will do. We will create camera zones here and here. And when the player enters a certain zone, we switch to a specific camera. To define those zones, let's create an empty game object and add a box collider to it. We don't want collisions, so we enable is trigger. I'll change the shape to cover all this area here. To recognize those zones, we will tag them as, wait for it, camera zone. Now I'll duplicate this game object and make another zone next to the dummy bean. Next, to associate a camera to a camera zone, let's not overthink it. We just add the virtual camera as a child. We don't really need model behaviors for this simple use case. However, we need one new script that we will call camera zone switcher, and this will go on robot Kyle. One thing to not forget is that now that we have triggers, we need to make our character able to detect those zones. As you know, one of the two objects must be a rigid body for collisions to work. Then we add a rigid body and set it to is kinematic. And I will also add a capsule collider that I will set as trigger because it's just a sensor for this video. You might want to do it differently. Maybe you want to put the rigid body on each camera zone. Everything works. Do what is most appropriate for your game. All right, let's write again some code. First, we work with Cinemachine. So we must import it at the top. Then to make sure that one camera is active in between zones, we can remember which camera is the primary one. On trigger enter, we check the tag of the collider, which is here defined as a public string. So it's a bit less hard-coded, you know what I mean? If we have a camera zone, then we can go find the virtual camera on that object. We know it's a child, so we do get component in children. And then we call switch to camera. Children is not ideal for performance. You should cache the result and the game runs at 500 FPS. What do you want to optimize? Get component children for some occasional lookup is totally fine. If you need that reference often, then maybe just cache it. But here we use it exactly once. Then 
on trigger exit, we compare the tag again and we switch back to the primary camera. Switch to camera takes the target camera as parameter and loops over all the cameras. It will disable all cameras except the one that is a target. Back to Unity. Let's write camera zone to match the tag and I will drag camera one as the main camera and add all the other virtual cameras in the list. Let's save, play and see how it looks like. When we enter the trigger, the second camera is enabled and the first one gets disabled. When we exit, we switch back to the first camera and we finally switch to the last one when we enter the last zone. It works. Right now, all transitions are the same. So let me show you how you can customize them. It takes just a few seconds. On the main camera, you have the Cinemachine brain. There, a default blend is defined, but we can also define our own. Right click in the project folder, create Cinemachine Blender settings. Click on it and there you can define transitions just like a small state machine. Click on the plus and let's say that from camera one, we transition to camera two using a cut. From two back to one, we will do an ease in and out, but in one second. And from any camera to the third camera, we could leave it as it is, for example. I'll let you play with that. Select the main camera and drag and drop the custom blender settings in place. Play and now you have even more fancy transitions. Wow, so cinematic, very filmmaking. Still there? I have two bonus tips for you. First, you can create your own shortcuts to fill out your components in the editor. If you write a method and put before in square brackets context menu with some text, you can then right click on your script and execute that function. That's very handy for automating certain tasks. If you have Odin Inspector, you can just put button and now this method is available as a button on the component. Very, very cool. And much faster than making your own editor script. That's for the first tip. Second tip is for intermediates and it's a way to extend the camera zone trigger system. One limitation of the current solution is that you can't have camera zones in camera zones. They are not really allowed to overlap because when you exit a zone, you switch back to the main camera. In my last game, Will and the Evil Duck, I implemented a stacked camera zone system. Whenever the character enters a zone, I push the information about the current camera on a stack. And when I exit the zone, I pop the camera info from the stack and switch to that one. I also use Cinemachine, but I used a state-driven camera. That's why it works with animations instead of virtual cameras directly. With a stack, you can do camera zoneceptions, which is pretty cool. It's just an example to spark your imagination. And now you know how to switch between cameras using Cinemachine. It's really not difficult. With that being said, I thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment below if you want to learn something specific. I'm always on the lookout for new tutorials ideas. And now, Go work on your game. By the way, my Discord server is live. You can come hang out, discuss game dev things and get support for your problems. Uh, the link is in the description as always.